my name is Natasha Clark, and I believe that everyone has something to be grateful for. When I was younger and I would be asked about the things I had to be thankful for, I would automatically say my favorite toys, books, clothes, and other material objects. As I grew older and became more experienced, I learned that there is much more to be thankful for. Now when I think about my blessings, I still remember my possessions, but hold my family, friends, opportunities, and my lifestyle as much more worthwhile. When I was in the first grade, my grandfather became very ill from heart disease. When the news came that he had passed away, I was heartbroken. It was hard enough to face the reality that three of my grandparents were no longer with me. I didn't understand why I didn't have four grandparents still. I began to look at the glass half empty rather than half full. All I could think about was that three of my grandparents had already passed on and that only my grandmother was still alive. I was blind to the fact that having my grandmother around was a blessing and oblivious to how lucky I was to have known my grandfather for seven years, getting to know and love him very much. When I began to think of life this way, new doors were opened. I was able to see the glass half full and recognize that in even the worst and darkest of situations, there is still something to be thankful for. When people covet what others have, it is hard for them to remember what there is to be thankful for. I guarantee that everyone in this room has wanted something that an advertisement has trained us to want. In the passage that was read to us, God is saying that there are so many things to be thankful for. Sleeping, eating, going to school, and just being alive are some of the best things to cherish. In one of the verses we are told, we should not measure our worth, success, and happiness on our worldly possessions we accumulate. This verse speaks about appreciation. It is saying to not become so well adjusted to our culture and our media that we begin to measure our happiness by the wrong standards that others tell us to value. It is saying to look for the positive in your life and be thankful for it. I believe that when you appreciate the things you have, worked hard for, and sacrificed for, you will know what really matters and make good decisions about how to use what you have. In the summer of 2013, my family and I visited South Africa. While we were there, we visited an orphanage and a soup kitchen in one of the townships in Cape Town. Although there are many people in South Africa who have what they need, there are also some very poor parts of the country. In those townships, 75% of the people do not have a job. Their homes are small shacks made of scraps of metal or cardboard, and they do not own the land their homes are on. The people who live there in the townships do not have many, what many of us take for granted, like electricity, running water, refrigerators, or even a bed. When we arrived, at first glance, I believed that these people had nothing to be thankful for. However, when I left, my thoughts were changed completely. The people who lived there were some of the happiest, most hospitable, humble, and grateful people I had ever met. My thoughts were not just changed by their attitude, but by the conversations I had with some of them. Vivian, who runs the orphanage and soup kitchen, told me, My house doesn't look like much. The rooms are small and the roof is sagging. But when I see my house, that is not what I see. I see my luck. I see my family, she said. I see the people I help with my soup kitchen. And last but not least, I see my blessings. After leaving, I began to realize the little things I take for granted, such as electricity or roof over my head. I see now that what matters most in life cannot be bought. Sometimes owning too many things can make us take what we have for granted. It can lead us to mistake our wants for what we need. A want would be something like a toy, but a need would be something like food or water. Most of us have access to an overabundance of things. It makes it easy to think we need more items, especially when we compare ourselves to our friends or neighbors. Meeting Vivian and the children at the center in Cape Town helped me to realize it is not having an abundance of material things that should matter. It is really friends, family, and other people in our lives that make a difference. Aside from just helping me to become grateful, my experiences have taught me that I am able to give to others who do not have their needs met. If we can make sacrifices of some of our wants, it could change someone else's life for the better. I am leaving you today with a challenge. Next time you feel bad about something you don't have, take a moment to remember the graces you have been given. And remember, when your glass is half full, it is time to start filling others. I'm saying, try to see the glass half full, not half empty. Try to make the most of your opportunities to fill your glass and others all the way.